In the head, the main through hole seacock, it is uh, stuck. In last episode, I introduced you to the dilemma, the conflict I was having with my boat. The main seacock ball valve in the head was seized. This is the valve that allows waste to go out to the ocean. Now, by law, it's supposed to be in the locked off position unless you're more than three miles from shore. However, it's actually seized in kind of the halfway position. I needed to fix this ASAP. I tried several remedies. I first dove down below the boat to look inside the through hole fitting from the outside. I tried to scrape out any blockage or gunk using a coat hanger. That didn't work. I then sprayed PB blaster on the handle area. That didn't work. I then plugged the through hole fitting from the outside so that I could take off this hose from the inside to clean and work on the valve. That process was not pretty. Come on. I think that sprayed on my face. Okay, that was lovely. That was a lovely idea. Did I get it on my... I got it on the camera lens. Oh my god. There it is. Oh yeah, you can see it. And after all that, this happened. Oh no. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. The handle broke. The fear now is that I have this open valve and the only thing keeping water from gushing into my boat is this little plug. So am I going to have to rush to a boat yard to haul the boat out of the water to replace the valve? A plan that would surely cost me around $1,000. Or are there other options? Is there any hope to fix this valve while my boat is still in the water? Let's see. I can't even talk right now. I can't believe this. That is not, that is not good at all. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about with a lot of boat work. Um, you um, think it's gonna be simple. I think it's gonna be a plan A situation. Um, and it turns into so much beyond that. Uh, it can't just be a simple change, change something out. I mean, something always um, malfunctions, breaks, uh, there's, three or four layers of problems underneath the layer that you thought you were going to fix. I don't want to get discouraged. Um, part of the, you know, uh, part of this vlog, I think is, uh, uh, sharing with you some of these dilemmas, uh, that you might, that you might encounter and to stay positive throughout. Uh, someone once told me that when you start having a lot of problems, when you first purchase a boat, that's kind of like the, the sea gods or whatever kind of testing you to make sure you're a worthy boat owner. So that could be what's happening. That's kind of the myth. Um, all right, well, I need to figure out the plan D or E. Um, I'm gonna talk to Ethan, the mechanic, and see what he has to say. He said, the good news is he said it wasn't as bad as um, I thought as far as the, the work to fix it. Hopefully fix it again. Who knows what's gonna go wrong in the next step. But um, I was freaking out. I thought maybe I had to take off the entire uh, through hole and replace everything. And he said, no, I could replace only the uh, seacock and that wouldn't require getting the boat out of the water. Um, I could keep it plugged as I have it now and I would go in with a new seacock uh, ball valve to, um, to change it out as long as the threads allow me to get the old ball valve off. So.
there's still little specks from the incident yesterday with the crap on the camera lens. Oh my god. Alright, so I've gone to West Marine and I got these items. This is a one and a half inch bronze uh, Seacock ball valve. I got another hose fitting here, inch and a half. And um, I got a new piece of hose as well. And hopefully this is going to work. And the idea is this. There is a nut at the very bottom uh, underneath the seacock, underneath the valve. I have to hold on to that. Then with my other set of pliers, I twist this off and hopefully it comes off without a problem. All right, this is truly, truly a nightmare. I've done everything I can to try to get this um, this valve off of here. Uh, I can't even explain. All right, I've got the wrench there. I've got a wrench there. I've got a couple of tools here to hold the wrench in place. Let me explain what we're dealing with here. First, you have almost no room in here to hold a wrench into place. I have this wrench down on the bottom nut. I had to fit it a certain way to create a stopper here so that the nut can't turn when I put pressure here trying to remove the ball valve. However, the ball valve seems to have been put on with some kind of extreme sealant, maybe 3M5200, which has essentially caused a concrete-like bond between the two pieces I'm trying to separate. No matter how much pressure I use, it won't budge. Now why is it so important to hold this bottom nut tightly, you ask? If this nut is not held tightly with counter pressure, and if I use too much force up here trying to remove the valve, that could break the seal here where the through hole fitting is seated into the hole. If I crack that seal, water will start to leak into the boat. And that's, well, not good. So, and to make matters worse, there is no room to fit a large enough wrench, nor could I get a good angle to get a strong grip. So I had to get creative. I've got this item there on there. I was using, where is it? I was using this as a pry bar actually, but using a book to protect the wood. So I was using this as a pry bar, right like that. And I was pushing like a crazy person and it still, still wouldn't budge. I used heat as well to try to loosen it up. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So I was talking to Ethan and then he said the only option may be to perform surgery on this because uh, obviously the ball valve is completely shot. So I don't really, ma I don't care if I um, damage it, but where'd my stuff go? Um, he suggested using a Dremel and cut it off, but making sure to not touch the threads of the through hole. That way I can still use that through hole for my new uh, valve, ball valve. That's the plan of action. Probably won't be able to film it, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to try that. It's going to be a, um, it's going to be interesting. Let me draw you a clearer picture of what we're dealing with. Here is the boat's hull. Here is the outside ocean water. The through hole fitting is here. We'll call it part one. It's a threaded piece like this and what I pointed out earlier. Then. Screwed on to the part one is a seacock here. We'll call the seacock part two. The seacock is our problem area. We have to cut part two off with a Dremel saw without touching part one. This is equivalent to when the doctors cut a cast off of a person's arm without touching the skin. But to make matters worse, there is no room here in the hose closet. I can barely fit the Dremel behind the fittings. And even then, I'm going to have to use a tiny mirror to see what I'm doing. Let's see how this goes. I'll show you what I've done because, like I said, I couldn't really shoot much video. My hands were completely dirty, as you can understand. I couldn't uh, handle the camera. Also, that Dremel situation wasn't, it was just crazy. I mean, I'm in there with not even a centimeter of wiggle room uh, and a mirror trying to do this you know, thing and not trying to hit any other components in there with the Dremel uh, tool as it was spinning. Uh, sometimes I was actually, um, you know, I couldn't even turn the thing off and it's sitting there spinning and I'm grabbing it with my other hand to try to hold it steady while I tr turn the little on and off switch before I, you know, that way the blade doesn't, literally the blade was within a centimeter of other components 
spinning that I couldn't hit. So it was just, it was just crazy. So, all right. Um, I'm finally getting my composure back. I was pretty frustrated a minute ago, but uh, I was able to take off, I took off this elbow piece here using the Dremel. I needed this elbow piece out of the way just so I could have better access. All right, you can see back here what I'm dealing with. I've used the Dremel and now I'm going to use this flathead screwdriver to pry away some of the cut areas, which hopefully will weaken the bond enough to remove the valve. And the goal here is to remove some of this without hitting the threads. As you can see, even getting the screwdriver back here is a challenge. Now imagine using a Dremel in this space. Moving my mirror around, dang it. I gotta have that mirror to see what I'm doing. So I don't want to be too forceful with the threads. I got a slight movement of it. Uh, let me show you what I've been doing. I've been pretty much pulverizing this thing. Uh, let's see if you can see it. Uh, so I see what happens when I get it off. It makes me a little nervous. We have a bigger wrench here. up early I've got to finish this project this morning you'll see here the very uh, tiny part of the threads that I hit with the Dremel which uh, should not affect the integrity of the uh, the through hole uh, fitting so this has been a project from you know from hell to be honest with you uh, it's been three days of just trying to figure this whole thing out and then diving into the the, the crap um, obviously, <laughs> you should wear gloves. Tip, uh, pro tip, wear gloves when working in the uh, the head. Really disgusting. Um, this morning, I'm going to finalize the uh, the new valve. I'm going to put the the Tef gel uh, to get it all secure, and then I'm going to clean it up. I mean, this is this this head is just completely destroyed with um, crap everywhere, literally and uh, tools everywhere and it's a small confined space so I'm going a little crazy having it so uh, cramped and crazy with tools everywhere. I'm going to clean it up today. I'm going to clean up the rest of the boat and that's it. I'm going to uh, move on to another project but I'm glad to have this one done. Uh, I'm going to take a break from uh, working on the head for at least a few weeks to prioritize some of the other um, the other things I need to work on but anyhow uh, let's get back into the head and uh, finalize this. So I've gone ahead and I've hit the uh, edges really, really well with a wire brush. On this, I put the tough gel around the threads there and uh, tighten that. That's the fitting. And obviously, I'm going to put a thread sealant on the through hole fitting part down there. All right, I got it in. It seems solid as anything. I'm feeling good about that. Uh, you see the new valve looking great. Loving it. Loving the uh, loving it. I gotta clean up in there a little bit more. I've done some initial cleaning just to make it bearable, but I've got to do a more thorough cleaning after this project. So this was the old hose, and now if you'll remember, there was a elbow situation that was on there previously. So I bought um, a new hose. This is the hose I'm going to use. The Shields sanitation hose. Now let me just explain a little something to you. The hoses in here you see are kind of the typical cheapo hoses from West Marine. 
that everyone uses for the head and I just hate them to be honest with you. They're super hard. They're not flexible at all. I mean, they're just hard to work with, hard to take off of the fittings, but they're probably a third of the price of these. That's why people buy them. I would go ahead and just outfit everything in the nicer hoses when you're doing everything for the reinstall because the truth is you want to invest some money in these hoses because whenever you work on this area you're going to thank yourself uh, down the road when you have to work on this and um, deal with all these hoses. So I recommend getting a little bit more higher end. These nicer hoses have the uh, reinforced metal piece, so you're going to want to cut that. Okay. 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 All right, that should be good. Hopefully, it's not too short. Just what I was expecting. I actually got it about a half inch too long. So I'm going to just trim it down a hair. I'm going to use a little dish soap with water to uh, lubricate this. All right, folks, we're done. This has completed the mission. You got the hose. I'm actually going to add another hose clamp. You should have two hose clamps anywhere that's going to be connected to something that's going out of the boat. Um, below the water line. Got two there. Those up and I'm going to add another one there. I have to get it out of my supply box but this was the old one that I'm throwing out. You got to check your hose clamps on the regular so that you can replace anything that might be rusted. One more thing I almost forgot. We have to take off that plug. And then we can really see if there's any leaks. The good news is I was able to get the uh, dock lines close enough to the dock so I can reach the plug without having to dive in again. Okay, let's go check inside and make sure there's no leaks. Okay, let's see what she does. Everything's looking good. Don't forget the ground wire. See if I can show you closer. See that? Major success. That was quite a project.